How are we doing, folks? Well, have you ever gotten the distinct impression that you're about to bite off more than you can chew? Um, I kind of have that uh, feeling myself at this point in time with this uh, project of replacing the engine and gearbox in the camper van. Um, and the reason being is that I cannot find anyone who will machine 15 millimeters off the front face of the gearbox in order to make room for the adapter plate without the gearbox being stripped first of all. Now I did not want to strip the gearbox, I've never stripped a uh, car gearbox in my life before. So um, now's as good a time as any to learn I suppose. Um, but uh, yeah, let's uh, have a look at the offending article. There we go. Right, so, that is the gearbox that needs to come apart. Don't mind all of the stuff in the background. The uh, garage has about three or four different projects on the go all at one time. And um, I'm running out of room in here. So uh, I'm going to have to do a tidy up at some stage. Um, I also need to drain the oil out of this. So let's start by finding something that I can use to remove that plug. It's a, <laughs> the first hurdle and we're already uh, getting stuck with it. So I, I'm hoping I have something that'll do it. Otherwise what I can do is I can just crack the uh, side cover off the um, the diff which will be coming off anyway and just pour the oil out of there. Not ideal and I think it could get messy but uh, we might have to resort to that. Let's see how we get on anyway. I'm going to set you guys up in a tripod. We'll get a drip tray underneath this and we'll start, um, we'll start stripping it. Um, wish me luck. Just by way of an update, when I left you guys last, um, I had uh, stripped the uh, turbo. Um, I've since put it back together again. Uh, the housing's cleaned up fine. Um, I managed to free the wastegate actuator, uh, or free the wastegate, and the actuator's back on there as well too. That works perfectly. I tested it with some air pressure, and um, yeah, it all looks good. So uh, hopefully um, that that uh, turbo will work really well. There's nothing really to it uh, when you have a proper. Um, when you have a proper uh, CHRA to install into it, it's, it's very, really very straightforward. Um, the only thing is, is that uh, what you can do is just leave those uh, bolts loose on either side, and that will allow you to re-index it to suit the engine that you're putting it back onto. So that's the only thing. Um, so I will loosen them off, and there's also a bolt missing down there, which I'm aware of. So uh, I will put that back in too, and then we'll torque everything up and make sure it's 100%. But um, yeah. No, it went together without incident. I was able to clean it up as you see as well too. So uh, the next thing really is to uh, test it. I mean, kind of installation is the, is the reverse of removal. So I didn't really um, bother filming anything in great detail about putting it back together. I think I had it done in 20 minutes. And um, yeah, and I just, just didn't have time to film it to be honest with you. So uh, the other thing as well too, I have a, a, an AM fitting uh, to go on to here uh, rather than the kind of um, flanged pipe fitting that's on it, uh, that was on it originally. The AN fitting will allow me to use the uh, hydraulic hoses that I got made uh, previously for the other engine to uh, use as the um, oil feed and return. So um, that will do a nice job on that. Okay, so first of all I want to try and drain the oil and I noticed that there's actually a little uh, drain or uh, uh, event uh, on the top of the gearbox there which may allow me to just um, turn it over on its side. So uh, we'll move you back a little bit more there just to so you can kind of get a better view. But um, before I kind of go trying to set this up on an axle stand and drain the property, let's just see if anything pours out of there. Should do. And if it does, happy days. Yes. Brilliant. Okay, so we can drain the oil through that. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a pair of axle stands and I'm going to position the gearbox on that first of all. And uh, yeah, that'll, uh, that'll make life a bit easier for us. Okay, so it begins. Let's get the... Uh, I can't find the bloody axle stands, they're vanished. Anyway, let's get these out. Hang on. Okay. They're not going to come easy, are they? That one did. Okay, so there's one. You may need a breaker bar for a couple of these. This is why I said I need to get a 5 amp hour battery for this. Uh, it's a lot better if you have one. connector there, I imagine that's for the reverse light switch. So 
Some of them are stitched and some of them walk out. It's... There we go. The oil is draining out into a little pan underneath the uh, gearbox there at the moment through that breather hole, so I'm just leaving it do that as I'm taking this off. Impact guns for when you're done talking. Now, okay, right. So let's turn it on the side now. We've got some of the oil out anyway. I'll take that off. Um, there's another electrical connector. I'm starting to wonder what all these electrical connectors are for. I'm sure we'll find out in the fullness of time. Because one of them is definitely for the reverse light switch. And God knows what the other one's for. Anyway, we won't worry too much about it for the moment. So, I said that's going to need a couple of taps with a persuader. So, turn it onto its side. Take this off. Um, I've installed the cable operated shifter mechanism already. Uh, you see those two new bolts at the top, and that all works really well. That's actually off a Porsche, uh, Porsche uh, Boxster. And so I had to buy that separately because uh, this would have been a shaft operated uh, shifter originally. So um, one of the conversions I had to do was that. It was fairly straightforward once I found the parts. And luckily enough, I found a place online that sells exactly those type of things. So let's leave that there for a minute. Poor out oil pan is a little bit squashed now, but it's not right. Still serviceable, still do what it's intended, uh, what it's intended to do. I see that there, and we will use a plastic hammer to start with. as well and then we might have more luck. Probably just fall off then. There we go. All the yoga doggers. <laughs> yeah, but this is a voyage of discovery to me, as, as, probably as much as it is for you. But probably some of you are shouting at your computer monitor saying, what are you doing man? Well, I'm figuring it out as I go along. That's what I'm doing. So, I need you turned around there a bit so you can see what I'm actually doing. You can see my Lister engine in the back down there. So, I'm going to try a couple of sharp, uh, light taps with a steel hammer. That's the uh, clutch actuator there. So we will uh, we'll be uh, using that again. Let's see now. I'm going to need to leave this off. Okay, so I'm not going to go any further on the um, on trying to remove the diff because it's not complying with me at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bolts back in with that. And um, we're going to just try and take the actual gearbox off the diff housing and leave the diff in place, and hopefully it all comes out. But um, I'm already kind of uh, struggling with this, to be honest with you. Um, I would imagine you can probably take these off with the pullers or something like that, but I don't know for sure. And I don't want to break anything. I'm sure, there's a, like there's a hex-shaped kind of um, boss in the middle of this. Uh, this flange here, and I certainly do not have any tools that are going to do the job to get that out. Uh, I'd imagine it's probably specialist tools for doing that type of thing. So let's uh, let's just put the bolts back in, pull it all down square, and um, we will uh, we'll approach this from a different angle. Sometimes these are the type of things you just have to do. Um, and what I'll do then is I'll stand it up on its end. There's gearbox oil pouring out all over the place here, but that's why I put the plastic down. 
So, it's, uh, I took out a couple of things like uh, switches and uh, there's a brake light switch, or sorry, the, the reverse light switch is one thing that's there and the other thing is the, uh, I, it looks like an oil temperature sender. It might, it may well be. Um, so we'll just snug these down. The important thing really with these types of things is to, it's not that they're, well, it's, it, they do need to be torqued to a specific level, but the most important thing is to make sure that they're all torqued the same. So you've even pressure right the way around the flange. So what we'll do is we'll throw a torque wrench on them now, and we'll just put a, put a torque of, say, uh, I don't know, 30 foot pounds on them, and uh, that, uh, that should do the job. Or what we'll do is we'll just actually just pull them up and I can torque them at a later stage when I'm putting everything back together again. I'll hopefully be able to find the, uh, find the torque value for them. Give me that my glove. Okay. So, with time you, get a de you develop a feel for these type of things. Yeah, see I'm going there. Uh, uh, crossways on each thing to pull it down square. Okay, so unfortunately, what happens sometimes with an with impact gun when you're using an extension to take some of the torque away. Really. Okay, let's try a breaker bar on these first of all. So we can just break the initial torque. MonkeyMetalTools.com. Ah, here we go. Hopefully, I have another one the same size. Well, folks, it's uh, day two slash three of uh, disassembling this gearbox, and um, part of me is getting a little bit fed up of it. But um, I am making progress, which is uh, which is the benefit here. So um, you'll see, I uh, took out one of the shafts. There's a snap ring on them. They just pull out. Uh, I didn't know that, but I do now. And uh, this one here is nearly out. So um, we should we'll just give it a few short taps with a hammer in this direction. There we go. It took a bit of pulling, but uh, not a huge amount of pressure. So uh, there's the two shafts out, so now we should have better success taking the uh, differential gear out uh, so we can get this plate off and it should lift off with a bit more ease. Um, so uh, yeah, unfortunately I came into the garage uh, after uh, 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 the, well, on the following day and found that there was um, gearbox oil all over the place, so the gearbox has done a nice job of draining itself. So. <laughs> Should have expected that was going to happen, but there you go. Anyway, this is a bit of a learning curve for me, and I'm sort of being a bit impatient with it. And I think if I, if I actually just went out a bit more methodically, I had better success. So, anyway, so yeah, basically what I did was I used a bolt here and a bolt here, and uh, just jacked the, uh, the the shaft flange out, and. Um, uh, it eventually came free. I'm going to change the uh, change the um, what do you call it? The uh, seals in there as well too, it, because it makes good sense to do that while they're out. Um, how annoying would it be if I ended up with a le leaking seal and I ended up having to take it all back out again? What I'm also going to do is I'm going to label those uh, to uh, shafts left and right so I know which one goes where. It doesn't look like they're handed, but why take the chance? I should have a little bottle of tip out now. These 
the type of things that I always got missing in the tip X and all that. Okay, so I'm going to go at this a little bit differently this time than I did the last time. Um, what I did last time was I kind of just used the impact gun to take them all out. But this time, um, on any of the ones that are still well torqued, I'm going to use a, um, a breaker bar to just break the torque on them first. But seeing as I already had that plate loose, I shouldn't need to do that with this. So first, first things first, let's put a fresh battery on the impact gun and give it, give it the best chance we can give it. did was I bought a new uh, socket it's a uh, Halford's uh, advanced range uh, they are actually very good tools to be fair I've always found them that way um, and they come with a lifetime guarantee why pay more there are some things it's worth paying extra for but these type of things it's working perfectly Hopefully the other bolts come out just as easily. Some, something tells me. I needn't get too uh, excited. Should come off easier this time. I can actually see through the gearbox now. What we'll do is we'll get ourselves a little pry bar and just give it a gentle lift. What I'm doing is I'm actually prying it around where the bolt holes are, so, um, you know, I mean, you're not kind of prying where the, where the seal is as such. This time. Folks, there we go. Now, so that's that plate off now. Okay, so now we're about to take out the diff. So, uh, wish me luck. <laughs> I've never taken the diff out. I stripped enough. Oh, look at that. It's not a thing of beauty. I stripped, I stripped enough turbine engine uh, gearboxes, but uh, never a uh, car gearbox before. So. Turbine engine gearboxes are actually an awful lot simpler than a car gearbox. They spin faster, but they don't, you don't have to shift gear with them. So, just a bit of wipe in here, just a bit of dirt, but nothing to be too alarmed about. So, let's see now. So, we have a crown wheel here, which is a nice big, beefy lump of a thing, which is exactly what I want to see. And that, that would, uh, you know, I'll show you it now. Um, go on and have a look. See for yourself. So that's what we're looking at now. So there's our uh, crown wheel. Or sorry, that's our pinion. And that's our crown wheel there with the differential attached to it. As you can see. There's your bearings. We'll give them a nice clean up and an inspection. Um, so uh, should be um, should be good to go on that. There's some, they, that uh, differential is designed to take some serious power. I've heard lads putting about 400 horsepower through these uh, gearboxes before. It can take 400 horsepower. It can take 90 horsepower plus the weight of a two-ton van. So we're a bit uh, we should be all right there. Anyway, um, next step is I'm going to stand it up on its end, and I'm going to start working on the. Uh, 
they ring a bolt around here. Or what I'll do is I'll actually leave it on its side and I'll uh, I'll use the um, the breaker bar on it and then I'll stand it up once the, the torque is uh, broken on them. So let's see how we get on with that. Now, I said that. Oh, it's much lighter now anyway, which is great. So let's put that there. Be careful of that because the outer base of the bearing as well as well as the ceiling face is in there. So put that out of the way. Okay. We'll get a breaker bar. Stand here. It's a Nielsen breaker bar I got actually quite cheaply. And I have to say, it's brilliant. Uh, he says that and he's going to break it today. Wait till you see, watch. Satisfying sound, that is. So, see, there's thread lock in all of these, uh, these holes, so that was loose. I did loosen a couple of them already, so. I'm going to use an extension of that. Okay. Okay, so I have all the bolts loose, except one, which annoyingly I had to drill out. I'm not, I'm not at all happy about that, but uh, look at the way I see it is this uh, gearbox housing is going into a machine shop anyway, so you know, and the, the, the bolt is actually in the housing and bringing it into the machine shop, so it had to be done. So, anyway, I've now two bolts in just just uh, uh, with a, the smallest of nips on them there just to stop the whole thing from falling apart when I turn it over, which I'm about to do now. Um, and what we'll do then is we will undo those bolts and hopefully the diff housing will just lift off the uh, uh, the gear case and uh, I know it won't. We can always live in hope. Um, for those of you wondering, I was very careful to make sure there was no swarf getting anywhere near the inside of the gearbox when I was drilling. Nobody needs to see me drilling out, drilling out a uh, broken bolt, so I kind of just stopped the camera for that point. Also, a certain amount of humility played a small point a part. It was my own stupid fault. I didn't have the thing square on and I rounded it out. So uh, I can admit that. But that doesn't mean I'm happy about it. So, as I said, these have the smallest little nick on them. One out. I don't know what I'm going to find in here. Well, I know I'm going to find gears, but <laughs> I don't know how it's, going to, how it's going to pan out for me. So it's a bit of a voyage of discovery. One of the more interesting teardowns I've done, to be honest with you, though. So, the lesson for today, children, is to make sure that if you're using a T45 Torx bit to strip a gearbox, that you make sure that you have it well down into the uh, into the hole and that you take your time trying to break the torque on it rather than just going gung-ho at it because uh, it doesn't pan out well if you don't. Alright, so let's see what happens now. I think we're going to need a little bit of gentle persuasion. So here's my gentle persuader, i.e. plastic hammer. Starting to separate. It's hard to tell. Yep, it's 
starting to go all right. Let's see if it lifts off now. I think what I'll have to do is I'll have to lie it down. Take it off this way. Make sure the gears don't all falling out on me. So again, I'm being careful not to not to use any ceiling surfaces to pry against. There we go, it's off. The moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. Stand it up on its end again. That's the reverse light switch I just took out. Um, the other switch on the, the side of the diff housing was actually, uh, it, it wasn't a switch at all. It was a it was the speedometer probe. It seems to be a monopole. Um, I should have known really, but uh, there you go. As I said, learning experience and all that. Okay. Let's see if we have a look at here. That to happen. I expected that the gears would. It's going to separate the other way around. But all right, not the end of the world. So. There you see. Okay, so I was hoping that um, I wouldn't have to uh, take gears out from the the front. Well, yeah, it would be front actually. It's sat. This uh, this housing will be the back in the Volkswagen uh, van. But how's this going to come out? So let's see. I've really gotten a proper look inside a gearbox before. So that's reverse. First, second, third. Fourth, fifth is down the back. So, what happens when you select the gear is I start gear selector. Basically, you're locking these ring these gears onto the shaft. They're all able to freewheel there, except for the one that's actually locked in place. That's the shift. There you go. So, this synchro rings there, locking rings. That's pretty cool. I like that actually. Alright, so it's in neutral now, so none of those gears are actually locked onto that shaft. So they're able to freewheel. So, uh, it's dirty, but I don't see any swarf or anything like that, which is which is positive. Um, but I'm also not sure how to free the hole. So that should come out. Okay. So need another uh, Torx bit to undo the uh, selector rod. In for a penny, in for a pound, folks. Right, where's my rag gone? There's a broken bolt, so I'm gonna try and get that out now.
Okay, so now that I've kind of assessed the situation, that broken bolt just came out by hand actually once I had the back housing off. There are two uh, plugs on either side here which um, hold the selector shaft in place. Now, um, they just uh, they, they seem to be like T55 Torx or something along those lines. So, uh, anyway, that's one out. I loosen it off camera. Um, take this other one out here as well too then. That should allow us to lift out the entire gear assembly as one unit. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some photos here because, as I said, I don't have a manual. I'm doing this by guesswork and figuring things out. Uh, so far, it's all, it's all right, it's going okay, but, you know, I could uh, be a bit happier at the same time. So let's say, all the time. I need something clean to put the gears on when I take them out. So, I got a sheet here, we'll do. I am seriously running out of space in this garage, it's a pain in the face. But, uh, so, this short, I'll, I was hoping it would kind of lift out as one unit. But that, I'd say there's a surf clip on the other end of that shaft, you know that? Is. That's the input shaft, so it's going right away out the front, so I need to find out how that comes out. Should have figured out that far before I got this far. Um, you never know, I might just need a tackle. Let's get this out of the way first of all. There's a little, oh, you can see it in the bottom of the gearbox there, the other little gear sitting down there, that's the reverse gear. That's the little one that goes when you reverse it. I don't charge extra for the sound effects, by the way, folks. release arm out of the way. So, okay. I think we're back onto our T45 torques but look at things. So wherever the hell that's gone, ah yes. Oh my Yep, that's the right size anyway. But we are not going to use the impact gun. from the, uh, the other side of the um, clutch slave cylinder that uh, pushes out the, the, uh, release, uh, the clutch release bearing arm that I uh, just showed you there. So what we need is an extension. Okay, so. Hopefully these aren't growing on this. Might be a better idea actually, you know, if I'm not going to move around as much. Try low pressure first of all. I'm 
the impact, the extension is absorbing all the power from the impact gun. And yet I can't get in and without it. <laughs> See the, all these old oh, tread lock on them. That's that one out. This is where I do not want to be going with it. Now, okay, so the torque, the torque is now broken on that. So what you can do is. Not, we'll be using treadlock to put it all back together again as well too. Now, if I can get hold of a workshop manual to find out what torques are supposed to be on everything, then it's so much better. Okay, so that's a spigot shaft. There's a circuit there for that. Okay, so So I want to take a picture of that there. The input shaft will just come out. But, uh, we'll see. It's not actually a circlip, it's a. Well, in so far, it, well, it, it is, but it doesn't have the tangs the on the grip. this way up. Note to sell, invest in better circuit pliers. That was by far and away the tightest circlip known to man. And when you don't have the proper pliers, my God, what a fucking nightmare that was to get out. You'll have to excuse the language, but I spent quite enough at that time, uh, enough time at that shite now. So now let's see. Hoping that by having removed the circuit, that would just tap out. And the hits just keep on coming. Can you tell I'm getting fed up? Right, anyway, so that's uh, There's a bearing in there, obviously, that's the, but it looks like, to be honest with you, that bearing may have collapsed. Or the, the, um, the bearing retainer, the ball retainers have come adrift. So, well, folks, we are into day four of this gearbox strip job. So, <laughs> I had to buy some tooling. Anyway, first of all, there's a decent circle of pliers, there's pullers, which is going to work beautifully to remove this bear and wait until you see. So. Here, uh, here is the puller's kit and what basically it consists of is these bars and 
little, uh, they're the ends and they have a small ball on the end that is flattened on either side and what happens is they go in between the two bearing the inner and outer race and take the place of another one of the balls. You turn them 90 degrees and it allows you to grip the inside of the bearing and pull them out. At least that's the theory. Let's see if it works in practice. So, first things first, let's see what size we need. Come with various different sizes of uh, ends. Straight away, that's much too big. That's an 11 mil. as well, that's the 9 mil. So there's an 8 there, so we'll try the 8 mil meter. So the 9 mil is only just too big. We're onto a different rod size now when you get down to the 8. Okay, so at 8 millimeters it is. Right, so um, we have an unforeseen situation. Um, basically, what's happened here is the um, instead of pulling the bearing off, we've actually pushed the shaft through. Now, that's not a major problem because what we can do is we can pull the bearing out afterwards. But the problem now is the circlip that I need to remove in order to get the shaft out is down inside the diff housing. So, we need to remove that next. In order to remove that, we have our circlip pliers here and we can pull that out. Everything is going to need a serious cleaning here because the on which a lot of it has got a bit of the contaminated side of things. I didn't intend for that to happen but it's just the way these things go sometimes. Given how much fun I had removing the circlip from the other side, this is going to be great crack altogether. So, yeah, we need to have a think about this. Dirt, this is incredible. So, I'm not, I'm not repeating last episode. Anyway, let's, let's get that circlip off. Success, folks. We have a stripped gearbox, more or less. So, um,. Yeah, it's as stripped as I need it to be. Anyway, I'm just going to take that bolt out there. This is the detend mechanism. And basically, what that does is it just, when you click it into gear, it clicks into gear rather than just falling in. So it uh, gives a nice feel and um, make sure it stays in gear. So, yeah, that's uh, so that just needs to come out now. There's uh, one of the roller bearings are in there. Um, I think that'll stay in there and I'll just mask it up as best I can when we're machining it. And uh, I need to get out the... Um, a ball bearing that's in the forward end of the shaft so I might be able to actually knock that out from this side now so we're going to try and do that um, but uh, it's very light uh, housing once I've ever out of it the little off weighs a ton when you have all the gears in it so there's the, uh, there's the bearing that I still need to get out so you can see that it's actually failed anyway the cage has gone out of it so um, either way that was going to have to be changed um so uh yeah it look at least we're we're a lot further on now anyway. Um but uh yeah as I said I wasn't gonna be defeated by this. Next step is to get it uh, get it in, get it cleaned, machined, inspected, and um put it all back together again, basically after replacing the bearings and I have a new set of seals to go into it as well too. So a uh, new forward bearing, new seal kit, clean up all the gears, clean up all the housings, inspect everything. 
it's a little bit of damage. I mean, it's a, a gearbox with 140,000 miles on it, so you know, it's not, not going to be perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be good enough. We're not going to be racing this thing. So um, yeah, let's just try and tap that bearing out there anyway. Um, if it doesn't tap out, what we'll do is we'll use the pullers and uh, draw it out. Uh, you know what? I might just do that actually anyway. Um, yeah, let's let's get set up and do that. Okay, so I feel like I've actually accomplished something today. Um, I have all the gear shafts out. Housings are over there by the door. Uh, I'm going to get them cleaned separately, but uh, let's uh, let's get these cleaned up here now. Um, literally just a case of cleaning them in the basin with some dryer. Uh, that's the dryer there to the left, and um, just get the heavy dirt off them. And we'll have a bit of a look. We're not going to go too mad on them. Once I'm uh, finished cleaning them, we will um, uh, spray them with some WD-40 to stop them from corroding. So uh, again, you don't need to see me cleaning stuff. I'll show you the end result. And here we are. These parts are all cleaned up now anyway. So there's the um, differential. Oh, cool looking bit of kit. That's the diff. Selector mechanisms. Uh, there's the main shaft there, and there is the input shaft. So the main shaft has these uh, rings on it, which move up and down and basically lock the gears that are freewheeling on this shaft onto the shaft when you want to change gears. So when you go to change gear, the gears are always meshed; they're always together. But what happens is you actually are selecting different gears and locking them onto the, onto the different. Um, uh, locking different gears onto the shaft depending on which uh, ratio you want. So you see that one's now locked onto the shaft. It won't stay on because it, there's a bit of spring pressure normally that keeps it in place. But anyway, see that's now locked on. So that when you're in that gear, whichever one that is, probably third, and um, it will uh, uh, basically um, really get third gear. So just just one on that. And that'd be, uh, say, I believe that is reversing first, and then you'd have um, second and third, fourth and fifth. And what happens is when you select gears, these move up and down, and um, they uh, they're what actually push them into place. So uh, yeah, they're all on different bearings. There's needle roller bearings inside there, um, and then you have the conical roller bearings, which take the thrust load thrust loads inside the gearbox as well as the general loads. Um, there's the uh, front oil seal, um, so I'll be replacing that seal, um, and the uh, output flanges are there as well too, so I gave them a clean. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's all pretty much um, there and clean and ready. So what I used is I used a paintbrush with some dryer first of all, and just uh, agitated them, uh, agitated them in the basin with the dryer, and then I used uh, petrol just to. Uh, Degrease them. Uh, so now the final thing to do is just to spray them with WD-40 to stop them from rusting. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's that. And then we have our housings over here. So um, that's the uh, gear case, so, or the uh, back housing. In the van, it'll actually be the front housing, but we won't tell them that. And there is the um, differential cover and the uh, diff housing. So. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not even going to try and clean that here at home, so um, I kind of gave that a little bit of a wipe out, but that's all I did, just to kind of de-oil it a bit, and stop it from ruining my car, but I'll wrap it up in one of those plastic bags there as well too. So, um, yeah, I'm happy with how it all panned out, so uh, once I got the right tools, it came apart handy enough. If I was to do another one, it would be a much handier job. Um, so now that I know what I'm uh, doing, to some degree, um, well, I know more than I did beforehand. Uh, bearing in mind when I started this, I had no manual uh, or workshop guide or anything like that, but I did find some information on the internet since then. And um, yeah, so uh, basically, um, all that's left now to do is to get the uh, front of the bell housing machined. Uh, we need to remove 15 millimeters from the front of the bell housing, which allows us to use the adapter plate. If we didn't remove that 15 millimeters, you'd be spacing the gearbox away from the engine 15 millimeters, and what would happen is the uh, the input shaft wouldn't mate with the um, with the clutch, uh, so you wouldn't have any drive. 
um, the reason we need to use an adapter plate is because the gearbox has to go in upside down. There won't be any problem with that because the gearbox relies on splash lubrication. So once there's oil in the gearbox and it stays in the gearbox, um, it'll be happy enough whether it's upside down or the right way up. So um, the reason we have to put it upside down is because because the engine is in the back of the van and the gearbox is in front of the engine rather than in the Passat where the, the gearbox is behind the engine and car, the gear, engine's in the front um, you would end up with five reverse gears and one forward gear so uh, that would not be ideal um, so uh, yeah, so that's why we need to flip it upside down and we need, still need to allow the engine to sit 50 degrees on its side in order to stay under the deck lid and to kind of occupy the original position of the VW engine that's in the van at the moment so, um, yeah, a little bit more work to do. Uh, cleaning and machining is the next part, and then we'll reassemble it, and um, hopefully I can get this gearbox to work again. I think it should be all right, though, to be honest with you. Everything's looking all right. I kind of did a bit of an inspection there as well. So, um, yeah, thanks very much for watching, and um, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in a future video.